This morning, um, I want to share with you a, a new sermon series. Where it's a three-week series on new life. And, and here's the thing this morning. Um, you know, we all think about a new year, you know, new life. But the thing is, is we sometimes don't think about what it's going to take to have a new life, something different inside of us. Um, and, 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 and we, you know, something that affects the, every decision we make. You know, I often, often said, and I've said this on the live stream the past couple weeks, about decisions we make really determine our life. And what I want to share with you this morning is um, this idea, and I, and I want you to, 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 to hone in on this um, little phrase. I need a change in me. I need a change in me. The only way you're ever going to have a different life, the only way I'm going to ever have a different life is to say, Lord, I need a change in me. Sometimes we want to change the circumstances, right? We want to change the surroundings and we think everything's going to be better. But the problem is we need a change inside of us. I need a change in me. So just say that with me on the count of three. Um, I, I, want, I need a change in me. One, two, three. I need a change in me. That's the idea this morning, that we need a change in us. And what is that change? That's what I want to hope to talk to you about this morning. And that change is a, a heart change. A heart change. You know, we sometimes don't think about the heart. And I'm not talking about that, that thing that beats and pumps blood. I'm talking about the core of who we are. That thing that makes us who we are and helps us to make decisions. That, if we're not careful, that heart, that, you know, that center of who we are can slowly become hardened to God. Can slowly become hardened to the things of God. Okay, that can be, you know, there are lots of reasons things can become hardened, but it's usually over time. Think about this analogy. If you know someone who's losing weight, and you think about the, you know, and you're around them a lot, you know, you, and they're losing a pound or two a week, you might not notice the drastic change in them until they've lost 40 or 50 pounds, right? Well, the same thing is true when you're thinking about someone's heart. Our hearts don't go from being moldable and shapeable by God to just all of a sudden being hard, typically. It's a series of events. It's a series of things that happen. It's a series of disappointments. It's a series of, um, you know, unanswered prayers. It's a series of disappointments. It's a series of rejection. All of these things happen. Or tragedies. A lot of people get hard-hearted when there's a tragedy in their life. Something bad happens to them, and it become, they become hard-hearted. And before we know it, that's where we are. And so what I want to talk to us about today about is that we need a change within us. I want us to think about where is your heart right now? What, is it in, what areas of your life have your heart, has your heart become hardened to the things of God? Because it can happen without even realizing it. It can happen without even knowing that your heart has become hardened to God. Uh, Proverbs 4, 3, 4, 23 says this, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything flows from that. So if, if Proverbs is saying everything flows from the heart... Obviously, if, if our heart is not right and our heart has become hardened to God, I need a change inside of me, right? I need a change in me. If there is something in my life that has, become, that, that my, that has caused my heart to become hardened, then I don't need a change in my surroundings, right? The, the surroundings can change. That's like people who have been married like 35 times. And they think that, you know, they get to the end. And it's like, okay, I'm gonna, just because I marry someone different, that everything's going to change, right? But they're still the same person. They still have the same heart. That's what, you know, sometimes we try to change the environment instead of changing the heart inside of us. So I want to talk for just a second about the heart. You know, we, 
we hear this a lot, and we're going to be talking in a few weeks in a new series on, you know, the great commandment and the great commission and things like that. And, it, and it's going to be talking a lot about the heart. So this is sort of setting us up for where we're going, hopefully, in the future. Is this. The heart, when, when they talk about the heart in the scripture, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. That doesn't mean that thing that's pumping blood right now and causing you to have pulse. But the heart is the core of who we are. The heart is what, you know, determines our actions. Our heart determines our behavior. Our heart determines the, the, the path that we're going to take in life. It's our wants and our desires and our emotions. That all has to do with what the Bible talks about is the heart. Who we are. Your heart is who you are. What kind of heart do you have? What kind of heart do you have? Do you have a moldable, shapeable heart? Or do you have a heart that is you know, somewhat getting harder toward God and toward things? Or is it completely hardened toward the things of God? I want to take you over the next three weeks to a book of the Bible, which I probably have not preached much from. Barb, I remember you talking about this in Bible study a couple of weeks ago about Ezekiel and dry bones. And next week we're going to talk about the dry bones. Um, I've really never preached on this, but I want to take you to Ezekiel. In the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, Ezekiel is a prophet. Ezekiel is a prophet, and what a prophet was to do was God would give the message to the prophet, and then the prophet would give the message to the people. Okay, that was basically what it was. They would hear from God, and then they would relay the message. They were a, a message messenger of God. And so they would relay this message to God, for, or to the people from God, sorry. So uh, Ezekiel was a prophet, and it was a difficult position for him to be in. And he was in a prof he was a prophet in a time period that was very difficult. In the book of Ezekiel, we find God's people, the Israelites, they are in Babylon, and they're in, in bondage. They're in slavery, okay? They're in bondage. They're in a very difficult position. And the reason that they are in bondage is because their hearts had grown hard toward God, okay? That's why they were there. God was using this time of bondage because their hearts had become so hardened that they started worshiping other idols, other things other than God. You know, well, God, that he, you know, they just sort of set God aside. And we can do that too, that we just sort of set God aside and we start worshiping other things. And so the, the people's heart had become hardened and God got frustrated and he allowed them to come under bondage, come under slavery. And so they're struggling. They, they, they were in slavery for a long period of time and they're struggling. Maybe you're there right now. Maybe right now in the middle of your life, you're feeling like you are in the midst of bondage and you are struggling. And you just can't see how something is going to happen. You can't see how things are going to change. Well, here's the thing. God could have said to the Israelites, okay, I'm going to take you out of Babylon. I'm going to put you back in the promised land. But if he didn't change their heart, guess what? They would be right back to where they were. So he has to give them a new heart. He, you know, the, the, God was trying to say to the people, you need a change in you before I can change your venue. Okay, I just made that up. You need a change in you before I can change your venue. That's the thing. You know, we need a change inside of us before God, other things can change on the exterior. So we're going to look at a passage this morning. If you have your Bibles and want to look at Ezekiel chapter 36. This is happening before the people realize that God is about ready to change their venue. He's going to change their direction. And he's going to prepare for that. And he's going to give Ezekiel this message. But you mountains of Israel will produce branches and fruit for my people Israel, for they will soon come home. They're coming home. I'm going to prepare the land. I'm going to prepare this, but they've got to, there's going to have to be a change inside of them. And so he goes on 
and said, I'm concerned for you and will look on you with favor. You will be plowed and sown, and I will cause many people to live on you. Yes, all of Israel. So basically he's saying, land, get ready. Tell the land, Ezekiel, to get ready because I'm going to send my people home. There's going to be a new venue. There's going to be a, a different location than where they are. And so all of these verses are getting them ready for that. The towns will be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. I will increase the number of the people and animals living on you. And they will be fruitful and become numerous. So God's giving this promise of a future. A prophet would always share the future of what's going on. A hope for the future. And so God is trying to give Ezekiel this message to get the land ready. I'm going to jump to verse 13 for a second. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Because some say to you, you devour people and deprive your nation of its children. Therefore, you will no longer devour people or make your nations childless, declares the Lord. No longer will I make you hear the taunt of the nations. And no longer will I, you suffer at the scorn of the people or cause your nation to fall, declares the Lord. So he's saying, you know, okay, Lynn, you got a bad reputation. And so now I'm going to change that. And I'm going to get the people ready. I'm going to get them ready. And I'm not getting them ready just to come back the way they were. Here's the thing. God doesn't want you just, you know, to be as you are. He wants to, he wants to bring you as you are, but he wants to change you. He wants to cause a change to happen inside of us. He wants, he, his desire is not just go, okay, I'm going to accept you the way you are, whatever. God loves you too much just to leave you where you are. God loves you and I too much to leave us where we are. He wants to cause a change to happen in us. So I want to look on down. So he's preparing the land, but now he wants to prepare. He's prepared the venue, and now he wants to prepare the people. And he says in verse 26, I will give you a new heart. Who is given it? Who does it come from? It comes from Almighty God. If you and I need a change inside of us, God will give us a new heart. You know, that we're not bitter or angry or, you know, whatever. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But he says, I will give you a new heart. I will remove from you your heart of stone. That hard heart. I'm going to cause a change to happen inside of you. And I'm going to remove that heart of stone. And give you a heart of flesh. Making you moldable and shapeable. And willing to be used. And I will put my spirit in you. And move you to follow my decrees. And will be careful and be careful to keep my laws. Here's the thing. God wants to change the, the heart of the people. He wants to change something inside of the people. But he doesn't want them to go back to the way they used to be. He doesn't want them to go back. Because, you know, and, and they had worshipped idols. And that was really one of the first commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. And he said, I'm going to replace your heart of stone with a moldable, shapeable heart. But be careful that you don't disobey the, the laws and, and fall back into that same pattern. Here's the thing. We don't like change. We sometimes like where we are. And if we're not careful, we will, we will ask for a new heart and then just fall back into the same pattern. You know, you know people who, who do that? They fall back into the same pattern. And so he's saying here, make sure that you follow the laws. Then you will live in the land I give you, or I gave your ancestors, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. Remember, the problem was, the reason they were in Babylon is because they had allowed idols, man-made things, to become the place of God, okay? That's when we become hard-hearted, is when we allow things to come in our way of God. 
What is your God? What is my God? What are the things in my life that if I am not careful can become my God and cause my heart to be hardened toward God? Do you know how, we're, we're going to talk, finish with this. Do you know how you can tell if your heart is hardened? You know, maybe this is you today. I don't know. But it's interesting to me as we get ready to, to finish with these last few thoughts that I can usually tell when someone's heart in the church is starting to become hardened. Do you know how I can tell as a pastor? People start missing church. They'll miss a Sunday. They'll decide this Sunday, I'm going to stay in bed. The next Sunday they'll go, okay, I, I, I'll, miss, I'll go back to church. I feel a little bit guilty. And I'm not saying this is always the case, but I'm saying that I think this is a sign. Then they'll come back the next Sunday, and then they'll miss two Sundays. And then they'll miss three Sundays or four Sundays. You know, and, and before you know it, they're out of the habit. And I'm not saying church is all of it. But what I'm saying is that's, that's always a sign for me that people's hearts are growing hard for some reason. So here's the question for us today. How do you know, how do I know that you need a change in you and I need a change in me? What are some signs? What are some signs that are proof that maybe I have become hard-hearted or am becoming hard-hearted? The first thing is, do you have difficulties in your relationships? You can't get along with others? You have strained relationships with someone? Are you struggling right now? If somebody hurts you, if somebody really, you're struggling with them? Marshall probably remembers this, but one of the things I often remember that Jim Mike said was, those who love the Lord the most are always the first to make the first step. And a lot of times we're like, okay, I'm not, I'm not making the first step to reconciliation. Let them. They're the, they're the problem, whatever. That, we become hard-hearted. Do you have people in your life that have caused you to become hard-hearted? If that's you today, you need a new heart, a new start. You need to pray and say, God, I want to have right relationships with people. I don't want my heart to become hardened. Because sometimes our heart becomes hardened with other people, and it leads to a hard heart toward God. Another thing that I think causes so, so much hard-heartedness is stress. Is there something you are worrying about that's out of your control, and you cannot control the outcome? You can't control it, and so, you know, you can't see how it's going to be fixed. And so you're sitting there going, okay. God, you're not working, and I can't see how you're going to work it out. So, fine, just, just have it your way. Are you living in that moment right now? You're so stressed out about things that you can't control. You know, I've been there. I have been there. I know you have too. And you've allowed your heart to become hardened. Folks, I'm, I, when I say these things this morning, I want to make sure that you understand. Just because I'm sharing with you a message doesn't mean that there are not times in my life that I don't need to hear this as well. I'm human just like you. I struggle with it. And I always have to ask myself these same questions. So I'm not preaching at us this morning. I'm just sharing with you some thoughts. Are there things that are out of your control right now that you're struggling with and it, it's causing you to become hard-hearted? Maybe you need to spend a few moments just praying. And the third one was where the children of Israel were when their choices and my choices and behaviors are against God's will. Are you and I making choices in our life every day 
that we know are against God's will. The Israelites did. They knew that God said, you shall have no other God before me. You shall have no other idols. But they just continued down that path. If this is you today, if you continue to make decisions that are not honoring to God, guess what? It's going to cause you to have a hard heart. You know what God calls us to is repentance. Not just asking for forgiveness and just going on and living our life, but a life of repentance. So whether you're here in this room right now or whether you're at home on the live stream or whether you're watching this at a later point, I just want you to bow your heads with me this morning. And I want you to think about your heart. And maybe just to pray this simple prayer, I need a change in me. I need a change in me. Is that you today? You can't change what happened yesterday, but you can start today and make a new end. The Israelites realized they need a change. They needed a change. God prepared the way. God prepared all the the details. And then he was going to give them a new heart. Do you need a new heart today? You can pray and ask God for that. I need a change in me. I know I need that prayer in my life at times. And I know you may too. Father, I pray for someone today whose heart has grown hard or is hardening toward you, toward others. Father, it's easy to do. There have been times in my life where I have done it as well, and I just pray for people this morning. I ask you to help us to desire a new heart and be careful Lord God not to allow our hearts to become hardened I ask you Lord to be in our midst as we sing our final song have thine own way have thine own way you're the potter we're the clay shape us and mold us into who you want us to be and that begins with a heart that is soft and is new. I need a change in me, and I pray, Lord God, this morning that each of us would reflect on that. In Jesus' powerful and holy name we pray.